Good morning. I'm Ms. Sigmund. I am a counselor at Gainesville High School. Um, with me is Ms. Kwesta Hamad from Unity Reed High School, uh, Ms. Hawkins from Unity Reed High School, Mr. Banks from Patriot High School, and Mr. Baird from Gainesville High School. So we're going to talk to you today about um, making the transition to high school. Um, we're, I'm going to talk about things that apply to all of you, no matter which high school you'll be attending. And um, we'll get into a little bit of our school specific information at the end. So we'll talk to you about graduation requirements and diploma types. Um, we'll give you a timeline for how we do our academic advising. We'll talk about our courses, the options and the sequences. We'll let you know who your counselor, high school counselor will be, and we'll go over some important dates. I'm going to explain some of the words that we use just so you understand uh, what we're talking about. A transcript is a record of all of your grades and the courses that you took, your grade point average, and eventually into the future, your SAT or ACT scores. When we're talking about credit, what that means is that every class at the high school is worth one credit. So when, when if you're wondering, does, does this get credit or does that get credit? Every class you take is worth one credit. You're familiar with the SOL test, the standards of learning. So in high school, um, there is not an SOL for every single class. You'll have to pass a total of five of those to graduate. When we talk about a verified credit, that means you've taken the class and passed it. And if it has an SOL that goes with it, you've also passed that. Electives are courses that you choose that are outside of the core areas. The core areas are English, math, science, and social studies. Um, in the middle schools, um, you've taken probably some art, music, tech ed. Those are the things that we call electives. Main difference in high school is that when you choose your elective, you'll keep it for the whole school year. In middle school, some of your electives only go for one marking period, but when you choose an elective, you'll stay in that elective for the whole year. International Baccalaureate, IB, Advanced Placement, AP, these are courses that are typically taken in 11th and 12th grade, and they have tests associated with them that come at the end of the course. And depending on how well you do on those tests and what college you wanna to go to, you may be able to get college credit for them. Advanced or MYP courses, those are typically what you take in ninth and 10th grade to prepare you for IB and AP classes. Dual enrollment courses, those are typically taken in 11th and 12th grade and um, are offered through a college. Most of our dual enrollment cl classes are offered through NOVA. Weighted credit means that when you're taking either an advanced, an MYP, an IB, or an AP class, you still only get one credit for the course, but you get a little bit of extra um, points added into your GPA calculation. A career in tech ed industry credential, what that means is that um, in some of our tech ed classes, there may be an exam at the end where you can get an industry certification. And a prerequisite is something that you have to take before you take something else. So for example, if you're in Spanish one, you can move on to Spanish two if you complete that successfully. In Virginia, there are three types of diplomas. An applied study is based on IEP goals, and that is for special education students only. A standard diploma is 22 credits and five verified credits, meaning that you've passed 22 classes and five SOLs. An advanced studies diploma is 26, credit, 26 credits and five verified credits. The requirements for each diploma are set for you and they will not change from now until the time you graduate.
This is um, a visual of the two types of diplomas, standard and advanced, and the classes, the number of credits that you need for each one. For both diplomas, you need four years of English. For the advanced diploma, you need four years of social studies, math, and science, and for the standard, three years of each of those. You need two years of health and PE for each diploma and one year of economics and finance. The advanced diploma requires that you take either three years of one world language or two years of two different languages. For each diploma, you do need credits in fine art or career and tech ed. In terms of the verified credits that you need and remembering those have to do with passing SOLs. So for each diploma, you need two verified credits in English. So that's a reading and a writing SOL that you take in 11th grade. And then you need one in each of the other core areas, one social studies, one math and one science. Um, every student will also need either a CTE credential or an advanced course, a virtual experience, and that is not a separate online class that you have to take. You will get that virtual experience in your economics and finance class. And you also have to um, have CPR and first aid training, which you'll do in ninth grade PE. The GPA, grade point average, this is an overall um, summary of how you've done academically. And it begins with high school. For those of you who are taking Spanish one or French one, um, algebra one or geometry, those courses count toward your high school GPA. The way that it works is, is um, in a regular course, an A is worth three, a, I'm sorry, an A is worth four, a B is worth three, and on down the line. If, an, if it's an advanced course, you get an extra 0.5, so that A is worth 4.5. If it's an IB or an AP course or a dual enrollment course, you get an extra full point added in for that class when your GPA is calculated. So as we're moving into the scheduling process, um, as you're coming into high school, there's some things we want you to consider. Um, it is important to understand the graduation requirements and understanding what you need to do to graduate understanding the testing requirements. So you do need to pass five SOLs um, before you graduate. We want you to think about career options and what your goals are, but that's something that we talk about on an ongoing basis. We're not going to expect you to know at this moment in time exactly what your future career is going to be. But we want you to take into account what you like and the things that you want to try, as opposed to what your friends are trying or what you heard might be a good class. I'm going to pass it over now to Mr. Banks from Patriot. Hi, everyone. I hope you're doing well. So I'm going to go over a few important dates on this first slide. Um, so for in your middle school, you're probably doing some pre-scheduling activities with your counselors, and that's great. Those are very helpful. You're going to be meeting with each, you're going to be having an individual meeting with your counselor on the following dates. So at Gainesville on February 10th, Patriot and Unity Read, Gainesville Middle, we're going to be going to Gainesville Middle to meet with you individually to pick classes for next year. Um, and the 14th through the 16th of February, Gainesville High School is going over to Gainesville Middle School. Um, on February 11th, Patriot and Unity Read will be visiting Marsteller. So it's very important if you can be at school to be there those days. If you're not there for some reason, it's not the end of the world, you will just meet with your middle school counselor and your middle school counselors, of course, do a great job. They know our programs very well but we would love to meet you on those days if you can be there. Um, and the course request changes are going to be due, it's a little different for each high school. So May 27th is Gainesville is the last day you can request changes. Of course, that's 
all depends on whether the class is open or not. Just because you request a change doesn't mean that the high school is going to be able to give you that. It's really important to try to get your courses right the first time. Highly recommend that. Um, June 1st is Patriots last day to request changes and you need to read is June 30th. All right, we're going to be, I want to talk a little bit about specialty program uh, applications because that actually, those are due before we visit you guys. So it's really important that you um, apply if you're going into a specialty program, especially, and we're going to talk more about the specialty programs at each high school at the end of this presentation. But if you, you probably, if you're thinking about it, you probably have already considered applying to a specialty program. For instance, at Patriot, a couple of the specialty programs we have are culinary arts. So if you are interested in applying to that, well, you can't do that until 11th grade. That's, sorry. <laughs> um, well, you could to transfer. If you're thinking about going into culinary arts at Patriot and you wanted to transfer, transfer for that program, then you would have to apply on February 1st for that. Or if you wanted to go into our um, construction tech, for instance, you'd have to apply by February 1st. And there's a link on this presentation right there. Or you can just go to the Prince William County webpage and you it's very easy to find. All right, again, we're gonna reemphasize the course selections. So Patriot High School, the last day to request changes is June 1st. So it's super important. If you do anything after today, this would be good homework for you. Write out seven classes and pick some alternate classes for your electives. And we'll talk more about that. If you have that done before you meet with a counselor, you won't need to request changes. You'll have it all figured out. You'll just reaffirm it with your counselor, your high school counselor, when we come to visit you. Again, Uni Reads June 30th is the last day to request changes and Gainesville is May 27th. And that's why it's important to choose, why, why is it important to choose alter, alternate classes is because sometimes classes close, they're super popular and we can't possibly offer all the sections to fit in all the students. So it's important to choose alternates just in case you don't get your first choices. All right, now we're gonna talk about earning credits. As Ms. Sigmund mentioned, you are earning credits for high school classes. Um, any middle school class that's not a high school credit class, like you're, you could be possibly an algebra or geometry, you're earning high school credit if you pass the class. So all the classes in high school you're earning credits. So in order to be promoted to the 10th grade, you're in seven, seven classes as a ninth grader. You have to pass at least five to be considered a 10th grader. Should be passing seven. That's what most students do, thankfully. And then grade 11, there's a minimum of 11 credits. So if you're not earning at least 11 credits by the end of your 10th grade, you're kind of falling behind. You're definitely going to be meeting with your counselor. You're probably going to have to go to summer school and that sort of thing. So it's really important to be working hard in your classes and passing your classes and thus earning the credits. That's how you earn credits. You pass the classes that you're in. And so to be considered a senior, you have to have a minimum of 16 credits. That gives you a chance to take a full load of classes as a senior and graduate in June with your class. All right. These are typical course selections for um, most ninth graders. Well, all ninth graders are going to have an English class, a math class, a science class, social studies. Most are going to have health and PE. There are ex some exceptions to that. If you're pursuing an advanced diploma, you will be taking a world language. If you're just pursuing a standard diploma, you don't necessarily have to be taking a world language, but you could be. Um, and there you're gonna pick a couple of electives too. And there's some sample course schedules in the course catalog, which you can look up online. It's a, there's a, an electronic uh, document. You can just do a Google search and find it. PWCS course catalog. 2022-23. Um, 
So this is the, for English, this is our course sequence. So you can get an advanced diploma and take all standard level classes. So you could just do English 9, 10, 11, 12. Every student's taking an English class each year. There's four credits required for both diplomas. Um, so the advanced MYP, that's the middle year program. That's for the Unity Read. If you're in the IB program at Unity Read, then you would be taking it, the advanced MYP title class, English 9. If you're in advanced English at uh, Patriot or Gainesville, we just call it advanced English 9. Um, you can see in English 11 and English 12, you'll have an opportunity to take some other classes, which are AP, I'm not going to go into that too much right now, or dual enrollment class, English class. And you can do those both, if you're recommended for, you can do those English in English 11 and 12. And you, of course, as Ms. Sigmund mentioned with the SOLs, you'll take your reading and writing SOL in English 11. So those are the tests that are required to graduate. All right, social studies. Um, for an advanced diploma, you'll have to take World History 1 and 2. And there's a little different sequence if you go to you need to read for their IB program, the sequence is a little different. That's those students will be taking advanced world NYP world history to their ninth grade year. And then they would be taking the advanced NYP AP comparative government their sophomore year. That's kind of the big exception. If you're just going to uni read as for a regular diploma, then you would just be taking world history one to US history, US government. All students have to take at least one world history, US Virginia history, and US government. If you're getting an advanced diploma, you have to have two years of world history at some point. And there's one social studies verified credit required. All right, these are the science options. Um, we have the biology, the advanced MYP biology. And I guess, again, that refers to the IB program at Unity Read and advanced biology. So your, your science teachers are gonna be recommending you for the science and it's, it's strongly encouraged that you go along with whatever your eighth grade science teacher is recommending you for. They know you best and they know what our program is. So they're gonna put you in the right place. Please trust them. Um, there's one science verified credit required. So again, the verified credit is an SOL test and you must take the biology SOL in high school. All right. Um, additional science, uh, tell me, I can't remember. I'm, I can't tell which slide it is. It is. <laughs> so, um, yep, yeah, so for an advanced diploma, you have to have four credits of science, and three of those have to be in different disciplines. So you have to take, if you take biology your freshman year, chemistry your sophomore year, um, you can take another chemistry or biology your junior year, you're just going to have to take an environmental science and earth science or physics your senior year. So a lot of students do biology, chemistry, physics, and then they take whatever science they want their senior year because that covers the three different types of sciences within it. Standard diploma is just three science credits and you have to have two different disciplines. You'll be working with your high school counselor to make sure you're in the right science classes though. All right. So a typical sequence for the standard diploma math sequence is algebra one, part one in ninth grade. There are some exceptions to this. This isn't set in stone. Some students start off in a different math in ninth grade. But if you start off in algebra one, part one, you're gonna go typically to algebra one, part two, or just the algebra one class. And then you would do geometry. Um, and then 12th grade, you got a couple of different options, either algebra, um, yeah, then you would go to AFTA if you did geometry 11th grade, for sure. Um, 
So there's one math verified credit. So you have to take one math SOL in high school and you have to complete for the standard diploma at least three math credits. And next up, I'm not sure who's next up. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's Miss Hawkins, it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. The next few slides, I'll be talking about the math sequence for the advanced studies diploma. And it depends on what math you are currently taking in eighth grade. So for those of you who are in pre-algebra right now in eighth grade, the next course you would take for next year would be algebra one, 10th grade geometry, 11th algebra two. And depending on if you meet the prerequisites and teacher recommendations, you could also do the advanced NYP option or advanced option for those courses. In 12th grade, you're looking at taking an advanced math class. Um, and so it's important to remember, you do need that one math verified credit um, for graduation and you must take a math SOL in high school. So even if you are currently in say algebra one or geometry, and you pass the SOL in middle school, you still have to take a math SOL in high school, okay? And um, you would need a total of four math credits and it has to include algebra two. So if you're a current eighth grade student in algebra one, next year you would be looking to take geometry, 10th grade algebra two, and then an advanced math choice, 11th and 12th grade. Same as before, you do have the option to take an advanced NYP or advanced classes. If you were a current eighth grade student in geometry, next year you would be taking algebra two or an advanced option of that. And then 10th, 11th, and 12th, you're looking at advanced math course. So for the world language sequence, Basically, once you finish the first level of a language, you go to the second. And um, if you are currently in eighth grade in a world language at the first part, you could go all the way up to the fifth level of that language. Um, so, for example, if you're in eighth grade taking Spanish one, you could, by the time you graduate as a senior, be in Spanish five. Um, if you are not currently in a language and you want to begin taking a world language next year, you could take all the way up to the fourth level of that language by your senior year. Um, we do suggest that students have at least a B in um, language arts in eighth grade before beginning a world language. And so I know as Mr. Banks mentioned, there is a difference between the two diploma types. So for the standard diploma, you do not have to take a world language. Um, if you choose to do so, that would be counted towards an elective credit. Um, if you go for the advanced studies diploma, you will have to take at least three years of a language, or you could do two years of two different languages. So for example, Spanish one and two, French one and two, and then that would count for the requirement of world language. Um, it's important to keep in mind that colleges typically do prefer you to take three or more years of a world language. So if that is something you are interested in pursuing post high school, um, taking a world language definitely does look good to colleges. So it's extremely important to understand that you do not need to take an advanced, advanced NYP, IB, AP, or DE course to earn the advanced diploma. Obtaining an advanced diploma is solely based on completing all of the requirements needed for that diploma type. So please be sure to talk it over like your course selection with parents, guardians, teachers, um, making sure you check their recommendations and your counselors before um, selecting an advanced course to take for next year. And um, colleges, sorry, I just wanted to add, um, when you take the exam, like AP exam or um, an IP, IB exam, um, some colleges um, will take that for college credit. So it's important to um, speak with the school you're planning on applying to, to make sure that they do accept 
that as credit. If you are considering taking an advanced course, understand that it is exposing you to college level work. So the curriculum will be more rigorous inside the classroom and also as far as homework requirements are concerned. Um, so once again, make sure you're talking it over with your parents' guardians, you're looking at your teacher recommendations and um, speak with your counselor during academic advising to make sure that you are picking the right courses for you and that you have that balance. So you're not too overwhelmed beginning your freshman year of high school. Okay, so next Mrs. Cuesta Hama will take over and kind of go over some stumbling blocks, some keys to success, and then go into some specifics about Unity Read. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so some of the things you want you to keep in mind um, that might stand in your way of being successful would be things like this, lack of homework completion, lack of study skills, um, maybe you're struggling with your organization and keeping on top of your assignments, uh, not attending class, poor attendance in general, um, or an overwhelming course load. You know, you've had great ideas to take some advanced classes, but you're just not able to keep up with the work. Um, so the transition to high school can be difficult for some of our students, um, and it's extremely important to get off uh, on the right uh, foot and to talk to your counselor about any ways they can help you. So some of the keys to success are asking teachers, your counselor, administrators uh, when you need help um, and for some resources that would you know, guide you along, uh, developing strong study skills, organizational skills, and managing your time well. Um, daily attendance and completion of work will assist you a great deal um, and completing your assignments on time so that you can keep up with the pace of the class and the workload that's assigned in that class. Daily checking your Canvas, weekly checking your student view just to see if your grades have been put in and just to check and see if you need to go back to your teacher and talk about um, your assignments or your progress thus so far. Understanding of the grading scale um, and daily practicing your oral skills and world language will help you be successful in those, those classes. Um, and then obviously as well, uh, working on your math in addition to that. Um, so we would just wanna reiterate that time management is everything. When you go into high school, you're gonna be balancing your academic workload, potentially your sports and um, extracurricular activities, the clubs that you wanna participate in, and then also your friends and family. Maybe you have demands at home that you need to also um, factor in. And so we hope that uh, we can help you with your success plan in order to be able to balance all of those things. So a little bit more specific, now we're gonna go into each of the high schools. So for Unity Read, we're looking forward to welcoming all of our rising ninth graders. These are the specialty programs we offer at our school. We have the Air Force ROTC, cosmetology, firefighting, aviation maintenance, electricity, environmental engineering, and our IB program. Um, you can take IB courses and not be a full IB diploma candidate. Um, and that would be in the way of taking some of our advanced NYP courses in ninth and 10th grade. Um, and then later on, it would be, you could take courses in, um, and just have IB honors classes. And you could also follow the IB career program or do the full diploma. So there's many opportunities um, for you to take advanced coursework at our school. Um, and be a part or take advantage of some of the training and um, learning opportunities. This is the breakdown of our counselors that are here in our counseling department. Um, students are assigned to counselors based on your last name. So you would see um, it's broken down by alpha. And uh, then we also have two secretaries and we have a career counselor that works on a lot of the um, components to help you kind of navigate and figure out your next steps and guide you in the right way towards um, after high school planning. These are the important dates that are related to Unity Read um, and also the county in general. So for example, like Mr. Banks was mentioning, if you're interested in applying to a specialty program, the application deadline is February 1st. So you're not gonna be meeting with your high school counselor before that deadline. So that's something that you might wanna, you need to consider now, have a conversation at home. If you have any questions, check with your middle school counselor or, or any of your teachers, they may be able to uh, guide you as well. February 1st is the application to try to get into the specialty program of choice. Um, with regard to Unity Read counselors, again, we're going to be coming into Gainesville Middle School February 10th 
on February 11th, we're going to Mars Stellar Middle School, and then we'll be um, working with you to finalize your schedules. Any changes to that schedule is due to us by June 30th. And now I'll pass it back over to Gainesville High School. Thank you. Um, I'm Mr. Baird from, from Gainesville High School. Uh, what you see now is a little bit of a breakdown of our counseling department as it is. Um, we don't have a senior class at the moment, so we'll be growing when you freshmen come in next year and, and there will be some more names added to that list, but currently you can get an idea of who the counselors are at Gainesville. Um, one unique aspect of Gainesville is, is our specialty program. Uh, if you are zoned to attend Gainesville next year, you do not have to apply to this program, but you will participate in it. Uh, every student will graduate in a pathway. Our, our specialty program is called Global Citizenship or Pathways to Global Citizenship. Um, we'll go into the five houses in a little bit, but there are five houses. Um, within each house, there's multiple pathways. These pathways are connected by the house's theme. The purpose of students following a pathway is for them to cr create connections and dive deeper into an area of interest that they find interesting or may wish to study in the future. Um, this can connect to a potential college choice or college major. Um, so by the time you as freshmen become seniors, once you finish, you'll have taken at least four to six courses in your specific pathway. And then you'll also have a chance to go beyond completing a pathway and completing a capstone experience, which is a in-depth project uh, that you propose and, and it, you propose it to a committee and it's approved. And if it's approved, uh, once you complete that, you will have received the recognition of an extended learning experience um, and the uh, recognition that comes with that. So the five houses that um, we have our language and culture, uh, engineering, math, and automation, science, health, and medicine, political science, and criminology. And then the last is independent study and scholarship. You can see in parentheses within each house, uh, there are pathways linked specifically to, to that house um, and to the subject within that house. So just for example, the science, health, and medicine house, um, so it's, you have the chance to study science like global ecology or health and medicine like biomedical science. Um, and then dependent on your, your elective that you choose, when you meet with your counselor, uh, it'll kind of put you in your initial house. Um, and then from there, we'll, we'll, we'll guide you as you um, continue your, your way through high school. So, um, we look forward to meeting you all. I'm gonna pass it back to Mr. Banks and he's gonna talk a little bit to, uh, to you about Patriot. Hi everyone. Yeah, Mr. Banks from Patriot again. Um, so our specialty programs are AP scholars. Um, as Ms. Hawkins, it might've been Ms. Koista Hamad, sorry, mentioned about AP scholar or, or or her IB classes, you can take AP classes without being an AP scholar. So AP, if you're recommended for them, AP classes are available to you without being officially in the program. Um, we also have building trades, which is a little bit of design, electrical, plumbing, and carpentry. So you'll get exposure to all of those things. You don't go in depth into any of those things. They have, a real, they have some cool projects going on right now where they're building two sheds out behind the school uh, that the school's gonna use. So it's pretty cool. Um, culinary arts, that's cooking, food services. Ms. Chef Stevenson does a great job. It's a very popular program. Um, 
We also have ECE, we call it or early childhood education, uh, child care education and service. We have um, young families have their young children in the program. So we take care of uh, or the ECE, we, I don't, <laughs> the ECE program takes care of uh, community members who need help with child care. Um, in that, in that class. And you can also take that class for it being that program. Um, and we have our pre-engineering classes, which are Project Lead the Way. And those are actually classes, extra classes. So you, you take classes for credit in that program, unlike AP Scholars, um, which is just uh, taking classes with the AP designation in your regular schedule. All right, so we're, we're pretty stable. We're hoping to keep all the counselors we have now. Um, so this is it's a good chance that you, if you fall, if your last name falls within uh, A to C A R, that you're going to have Mrs. Kearns. Not sure about the end of the alphabet yet. Um, that's as you can see, it's A C A R or T E L to T R. If your last name falls between T E L and T R, then you will work with Ms. Mrs. Kearns this spring, just like with all the other counselors. So Ms. Portel has CAS to FE and she has TU to VIL. Mrs. Campbell has FI to JON or VIA, VIO to WEI. And you can see Ms. Luckton House's letters there too. Mrs. Valentino and myself. I'm easier because I was already at the end of the alphabet, so I don't have it really broken down. I'm R to TEK. And Mrs. Stutes is our school counseling director. Again, we will be meeting with you soon to pick your classes and you'll be able to access this. We gave you a lot of information today. Um, we don't expect you to, to know it all. There's not gonna be a quiz. If you have a question about something or you weren't sure about something, you can go back, you can watch this. This is gonna be posted with our voices as well. Or you can just go back and look at the PowerPoint too if you wanted to look at the, uh, you know, the graduation requirements and that sort of thing. Um, so again, I mentioned this before, if you just write out a list of seven classes and make sure the seven classes are an English class, a math class, uh, a history class, um, and, and the core classes and health and PE and two electives, one of those being a world language if you're an advanced diploma. So then you, if you're taking a world language and you have one elective to pick, but also pick two alternate electives. If you're not taking a world language, you're gonna have two electives and two alternates to pick. Um, that would be really helpful to you because you're gonna get to know the schedule you know, when we meet with eighth graders and it's obvious when you haven't thought about this at all and, and the meeting is a little more difficult and sometimes you guys even get frustrated with it because you haven't been thinking about it. So make sure you think about it, it's really important. And so the last day to request to change your classes is different for each school. So um, that for Patriot, it's June 1st. But for Unity Read, it was June 30th. And for Gainesville, it's May 27th. And so I think we're, yeah, so that's about it, guys. So do we have any questions? You can ask any of us. Did we check the chat at all? If you have questions, you can use the Q&A feature and we'll do our uh, best to answer them for you. Do you Do you know the first one, Mrs. Sigmund? <laughs> what about? If you're uh, going to another high school, um, meaning you're planning to transfer there, um, when the counselors come to your middle school, 
we'll still talk to you and we'll still make a schedule with you. If your transfer goes through, then a counselor from that school, Osborne Park or wherever, they'll get in touch with you to reschedule. Um, but we'll schedule with you as long as you're zoned for our school, we'll schedule with you on those days just to make sure that you have something in place in case the transfer doesn't go through. Um, next question we had was, can you take French one and for ninth and Spanish one and get, get both credits? You could take uh, both simultaneously if you have room in your schedule. So um, that's something you would ask the counselor and just make sure you have everything else um, covered. Um, for students who like world languages and want to take multiple, um, that's fine. You can do that throughout high school. You do have to have credit in either a fine art, a practical art, a business, career and tech ed. So we'll make sure that you get at least one of those credits in. Um, another question, at what grade can you start taking AP classes? So um, typically it's uh, in 11th and 12th grade. Some of you will, um, be able to take a 10th grade social studies course, whether that's AP Comparative Government at Unity Read or AP World History at Patriot or Gainesville. Okay, let me see if there's other questions here. Okay, so a student is asking, what are the uh, freshman electives at Patriot? So um, we, information, but a whole list of electives will come out for each of our high schools. So you'll have a whole sheet that, that you'll be able to look at. Um, another question for culinary arts, do you apply now for 11th grade? I'll let Mr. Banks take that one. That's a Patriot question. Yep, so if you're applying to transfer, you would apply now and let them know that you plan on taking culinary arts. But if you're already slated to go to Patriot, you don't have to apply to culinary arts now. Um, the next question, is there a digital art program at Gainesville? Um, so we're planning to offer computer art next year. That will be for 10th through 12th graders. And depending on interest, hopefully we'll be able to run that course. Um, another question, if you, are a student at a middle school who has transferred to your middle school and you are zoned for a high school that you don't see here today, um, then that school will be contacting you to choose your classes. It won't be right away. It won't be that same day that like say Gainesville is coming to your middle school, but it'll be in the next um, several weeks, somebody will get in touch with you. Um, okay, another question, which schools have coding classes and when can you take them? Um, so pretty much all of the high schools offer some type of computer science courses. Um, those are, the prerequisites for those are math-based. So um, a typical student would start taking those in 10th grade. Um, here's a question. Are there specialty programs at Brentsville? They, there are. Um, we're not familiar with those, uh, but if you look on the specialty program website for the county, you'll be able to see them. When you go on that website, it will ask you to put in your name and your student number. And when you do that, the list of specialty programs around the county that you're eligible to apply for, those will pop up so uh, you can see what those are. Um, next question, how would you fit six pathway classes in four years? So some of the pathway courses are the core academics. Um, so for example, in the health and medicine pathway, uh, one of the courses is biology and another one is a biomed elective. So it, you would easily be able to fit all of that in in four years. Um, let's see. Okay, if the student applied to a specialty program, when will that school get back to them for acceptance? You have to let them know that you're coming the first week of March. So you're, that your application's due in February, February 1st, and then you have, if they accept you, you have to let them know early March. So you'll be hearing sometime around that. They don't give you a whole lot of turnaround time. So I think they notify you by March 1st or close to it. Um, 
another question. Do we have sign language? Um, we have sign language at um, Gainesville and Patriot. Unity Read, I'm not sure. Do you have sign language? We don't have sign language taught here, but um, students, if they're interested in it, could do it through Virtual Virginia. Okay. Next question, can a pre-algebra student go into advanced algebra one in ninth grade if recommended by a teacher? Um, at Gainesville, we don't offer advanced algebra one. Um, I'm not sure about the other schools if you all offer that. Not any longer, we used to, we just have regular algebra one. Um, we offer advanced MYP algebra one. Okay, so if you're going to Unity Read and you're recommended, if you're doing well in pre-algebra, um, most likely you'd be able to sign up for the MYP Algebra One. Um, can you apply to two different specialty programs at two different schools? So when you apply for specialties, they ask you to rank your preference. So you'll tell them what your first choice is and your second choice. They will only go to your second choice if your first choice cannot offer you a spot. Um, okay, and last question, a student is taking Spanish but wants to switch to sign language next year. Is this a wise choice? That totally depends on the student and the circumstance, but that's a great question to ask um, when you meet with the high school counselor one-on-one -on -one, because we're going to talk to you about your individual situation. Okay, I think that's about it for us. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Marsteller Middle School and Gainesville Middle School. Um, this presentation is being recorded and it will be uh, made available to you if you want to go back and look at it again or if you just want to refer to it um, in the future if you have more questions. Okay, so we look forward to meeting you all coming up in the next couple of weeks. Bye, guys.